I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, what can you say about Roald Dahl? Well, how about that he's a beloved children's author who occasionally wrote for adults too? And today's subject is one of my personal favourites of his tales, as interpreted through the lens of acclaimed director Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Released in 2016, the BFG is Spielberg's take on Dahl's fantastic tale of a small girl and a small giant. A young orphan is taken to a country that isn't on any map and discovers a fantastic world. But this world is fraught with danger, as all the other giants like to eat humans. Receiving mostly positive reviews, it would seem that Spielberg's done it again. But the proof of the movie is in the watching. And so, without further ado, esteemed viewers all, I give you Steven Spielberg's movie adaptation of Roald Dahl's timeless classic, The BFG. Meet Sophie, a poor insomniac orphan. Who tells us the rules, even as she breaks them? Never get out of bed. Ah, yes. The rules. Being as they are, never get out of bed, never go to the window, and never look behind the curtain. Smart rules. Because these are the things, getting out of bed, going to the window, and looking behind the curtain, that get you into the most trouble. And when you break these rules, you'll inevitably see, or do, something that you shouldn't. Which occasionally can be for the best, but, you know. Rules is there for a reason. And Sophie sees an improbable sight. Which snatches her up and carries her far away. And at this improbable giant's home, we discover a little more about our protagonists. And why Sophie is now stuck here. Now our heroine is stuck in giant country because her captor cannot risk his existence being revealed, and he has no plans to spend the rest of his days in some grand zoo. Not that I think that people will put a giant in a zoo, but hey, people do some crazy things, you know. Hey, bung me a Kofi donation, maybe I'll tell you some of my wilder stories. Presently, sleep at last finds our heroine. <laughs> as does a hastily concocted cautionary nightmare about the dangers of giant country, which become apparent when the Flesh Lump Eater decides to pay a visit. Flesh Lump Eater. Nominal leader of the giants of giant country, and a mirror to every boorish pig that you've ever met. Our heroes head off to work, which comes with its own problems, when getting past the sleeping giants goes about as well as you'd expect. Luckily for our heroes, giants are afraid of rain. But oh dear, they've got the scent! Our heroes head for the Field of Dreams. Can you believe that up to this point our heroes haven't been properly introduced? You know, some people spend months together fall in love and still don't know each other's names. I still dream of the girl from Mars. No, not Mars girl, she's happily married! Honestly. And the big friendly giant catches a golden fizz wizard! Ah yes, dream country. In the reflection of a pond, where the wind on the tree creates dreams that the BFG catches and mixes, to bring happiness to a select few every night. Of course, the reality of the subconscious is far too complicated and involved to ever hope to even summarise it in a short link in a video review show, so I'll spare you that at least. After catching the dreams, the BFG blows them into the heads of humans. And he hands the phone to the boy. But Sophie's having none of the giant's cannibalistic ways. In the wake of this, 
Sophie finally has a plan. Sophie's plan. It's quite simple to explain. For you see, Sophie would send the Queen of England a nightmare. Ferocious man-eating giants are roaming England, and in the book, most of the world, gorging themselves on human flesh with wild abandon. But there is one among their number who isn't so cannibalistically inclined. And there is a little girl on the Queen's windowsill. From there, the plan was for Sophie to actually be on the Queen's windowsill, introduce herself, explain that the dream was true, and enlist the Queen's help in finally putting pay to these giant monsters. And so we head to Buckingham Palace. But of course, the dream is true. I is your humbug servant. And the reality is addressed over an eventful breakfast. And off to giant country to finally put pay to the menace of cannibalistic giantry. And so our movie ends with Sophie getting a family of her own, and the BFG growing vegetables that aren't snozcumbers in a giant country all to himself. So then, that was the BFG, and yeah, I'm gonna put this one into my house of love. This is a family film from the master of family films, and with a story from a master storyteller. It's charming, and I could argue that I would have done it differently if I'd made this movie, but they hired Steven Spielberg for a reason, and he delivers. The performances are magnificent. Being that Mark Rylance's BFG is necessarily CG, as are all the giants in the movie, the performances are captured and animated seamlessly. You really will believe that a 20 foot tall giant is a runt in the face of boorish 50 plus foot tall cannibalistic overgrown giant man-children of quite the worst order. Though, this would only make for half the movie if they didn't have a believable Sophie. But we are blessed with Ruby Barnhill, whose performance is magnificently understated. And while the whimsical score of John Williams puts me in mind of his work on the Harry Potter franchise, it is still recognisably Williams, and still sumptuously performed. The flow of the movie is smooth, as it is essentially a two-hander between ingenue Sophie and confuzzled grump the BFG. It hits all the beats of the beloved book, though not necessarily in the same order. And if you look hard enough, there are references to all the dreams mentioned in the book, and a few more besides. So if I absolutely had to pick a flaw, it would be that the score is just a pinch too Harry Potter for me to be entirely comfortable with. But this is a very minor complaint, and perhaps this movie's ultimate fate is to end up on some barely watched movie channel on a Sunday afternoon, or to be cycled in and out of Netflix or whatever for the rest of forever, but maybe just maybe, Steven Spielberg's movie adaptation of Roald Dahl's The BFG will end up being someone's favourite movie, and deservedly so. Overall then, it's a charming retelling of a classic tale, and that's all that needs to be said. So thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, why not consider subscribing, and ringing the notification bell for secret updates. And if you want to be extra awesome, Check out my crowdfunding links in the description below. But for now, I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks!